In studies that embrace the increasingly controversial out-of-Africa hypothesis, the Yoruba are frequently assumed to be the African ancestor of non-African groups. This includes all people of Eurasian, Native American and Aboriginal Australian ancestry. But where did the Yoruba people come from, and what is their genetic background? Researchers led by Josh Aki of Princeton University have spent years sequencing and analyzing the genomes of contemporary Africans who come from populations with extensive ancestry, including the Yoruba from Nigeria. Remarkably, they discovered portions of DNA in these genomes that resemble those of an African Neanderthal, or another hominid species. Geneticists speculate that this ghost species interbred with Homo sapiens following the out-of-Africa migration 60,000 years ago, because this DNA is exclusively present in the descendants of African people, and not in any Eurasians. But another possibility is that the Yoruba's ancestors entered West Africa around the same time as early Europeans entered Western Eurasia, mating with these African Neanderthals at the same time that early Europeans mated with European Neanderthals. It is still unclear where early Europeans and the Yoruba originated. We still don't know if they originated in Africa or somewhere else. However, it is probably not a coincidence that both these groups mated with archaic humans at the same time, on different continents. This suggests that the ancestors of Europeans and West Africans came from the same population, which was migrating westward around 50,000 years ago. In fact, estimates show that this event most likely occurred during the last 50,000 years. This is significant if true. That implies that at least one additional species of hominid coexisted with modern humans in Africa until relatively recently. Geneticists say that evidence which will soon be revealed indicates there might have been more than one hominid. The African ghosts seem to be as different from modern humans, in terms of evolution, as Neanderthals and Denisovans are. That indicates that they likely descended from the same population as the Neanderthals, according to Aki, who is non-African. The current theory goes as follows. 700,000 years ago, a population in Africa broke off from the current human lineage, left Africa, and evolved into what we now know as Neanderthals. Another split occurs at the same period in Africa, creating something akin to an African Neanderthal. According to estimates, the ancient set of genes makes up an average of 6% of the ancestry of the four groups. This is about twice that amount of Neanderthal genes found in Eurasians. An extinct human species, known as Homo rhodesiensis, lived between 400,000 and 125,000 years ago, and is referred to as Rhodesian man. The type specimen of this species is the fossil carbway cranium, which was discovered near Broken Hill in what is now Zambia, but was northern Rhodesia in 1921. During the early 1800s Central Africa was known as the Whiteman's Grave because explorers entered but never returned. The robust Homo rhodesiensis had a broad face and enormous brow ridges. It is also known as the African Neanderthal, despite sharing characteristics with both Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis and being closely related to Homo heidelbergensis. According to some anthropologists, it was the ancestor of Homo sapiens adultu, also known as Herto man, which in turn was the ancestor of Homo sapiens sapiens. Nonetheless, it is unknown exactly who these African Neanderthals were. According to the researchers, this mystery hominid most likely diverged from the Neanderthals, Denisovans and modern humans before that lineage divided into different groups. According to their estimates, this separation happened between 1 million and 360,000 years ago, and interbreeding between the archaic and modern populations happened within the last 124,000 years. This size of the archaic population was estimated to be about 25,000, which is significant. Although no ancient African hominid has yet had its genome analyzed, so it's feasible that this ghost's physical remains have previously been discovered. Stringer would, however, back a different suspect if forced to do so. He made the wager that Homo heidelbergensis was the introgressor. This species may have existed less than 300,000 years ago, when humans first appeared, according to recent unpublished research. However, it's possible that the ghosts were a subpopulation of Homo sapiens that, like the early Eurasians, lived in isolation from other populations for a very long time, 
causing its DNA to develop unique markers. Therefore, it's possible that distinct groups of anatomically modern humans existed in various regions of Africa and South Asia, 100,000 years ago or more. At some point, they might have mixed, and some populations went extinct. If our ancestors did not interbreed with other early hominins in Africa, that would be unexpected. Because we know so little about the population history of Africa, geneticists had to make a lot of assumptions in order to interpret their data, therefore the evidence for African ghosts is still speculative. This does not imply that hybridization did not take place in Africa. It's probable that it did. It's just very difficult to prove. The final piece of the puzzle will be solved when geneticists are able to sequence DNA taken from an African fossil, and compared it with the ghost DNA snippets discovered in contemporary Africans. That is a difficult task, but considering the developments in ancient DNA sequencing over the past 10 years, it won't be long until someone succeeds. According to the study, the late survival of archaic featureism and possible deep population substructure in Africa during this period suggest that the transition to anatomical modernity was more complicated than previously believed. Furthermore, the recent discovery that Africans have 0.5% to 1% of their genomes from European Neanderthals is another puzzler. As Neanderthals never lived in Africa, the geneticists previously assumed that Africans did not possess Neanderthal genes, and so did not test for the genes. And that's because all of the methods up until this point have assumed that Neanderthal ancestry in Africa was either very little or non-existent. And so we recently developed a new method that didn't make this assumption. And so we were excited to apply it to individuals of African ancestry. And to our surprise, we actually found substantial amounts of Neanderthal sequence in African individuals. The discovery is astonishing since it defies explanation as to how this many Neanderthal genes could have introgressed into Africans, barring the possibility that these African populations had previously resided outside of Africa. A fossil that Chris Stringer, the co-founder of the Out of Africa Hypothesis, studied for his PhD back in the 1970s, the Iwo Eleru cranium from Nigeria, might hold the key. This hybrid, which dates to roughly 13,000 years ago, and lived just a few thousand years before early humans first began farming, has an odd blend of modern and prehistoric traits. What's more, Stringer and others conducted a new study of the cranium, and concluded that it is incredibly strange for its age. It actually resembles early sapiens fossils rather than late ones, and it most definitely doesn't look like any modern Africans, according to a New Scientist report. The anthropologist hypothesized that this might be an instance of a modern human, whose forefathers had absorbed this ancient introgression. To put it another way, it may be a modern human who shared ancestry with an African ghost. Western Nigeria is home to the vast rock shelter known as Iwo Eleru. The Iwo Eleru skull, an archaeological find made at the Iwo Eleru excavation site in Yorubaland in modern-day Nigeria, may be an example of hybridization. The 13,000-year-old Iwo Eleru fossil may show that early modern humans persisted until the late modern era, or that modern people have archaic human hybridization. The skull was discovered in 1965 at the site, which also contained approximately 500,000 items from the later Stone Age. It was discovered as a piece of a skeleton that had been lightly covered in soil. The head was removed from the body and the skeleton was excavated and covered in plaster. It was originally dated to 9250 BC based on charcoal residues discovered nearby the skeleton. The age of the remains, however, was corrected in a 2011 study by Chris Stringer, using uranium thorium dating, which estimated a time period of 11.7 to 16.3 thousand years ago. In fact, it has been hypothesized that the Iwo Eleru man belonged to a relict archaic human population or was an archaic hybrid. There are three main hypotheses for the atypical cranial shape of the Iwo Eleru man. The first is that Iwo Eleru was a hybrid with archaic African populations. The second is that Iwo Eleru man was a remnant archaic population that was replaced by more modern humans at the beginning of the Holocene era. And the third is that Iwo Eleru man was a member of a population that diverged from the rest of North.
the frontal bone has mild recession, and the cranial vault is quite lengthy and low. For a male, the brow ridges are only mildly developed, and the nasal root is not very noticeable. The nasal area's remnants imply that the nasal bridge was comparatively flat, and X-ray findings indicate that the frontal sinuses did not grow much. All that is left of the upper face is a small group of shards. Based on what has been discovered in the maxillary molar region, including the infraorbital foramen, it seems unlikely that the upper face was very large. Despite the lack of a prominent chin, the mandible is well developed and appears masculine. It is unclear where the remaining teeth were originally positioned because, save from two lower premolars, the teeth are gone from the jaw. The majority of the crown has been worn away by wear on the anterior teeth, which all exhibit considerable attrition. The age of the Iwo Eluru man has been determined to be greater than 30 years of age, based on the evidence of tooth wear. Large bone fragments that have been crushed typically make up what is left of the remaining skeleton. The cortical bone is moderately thick, and the humeral shafts appear to be sturdy, also strong are the shafts of the femur and radius. The remnants indicate that he was of average height and build, standing no taller than 165 centimeters. Iwo Eluru man's sloping frontal vault was more obvious than in later Neolithic, and more recent sub-Saharan skull remains. The frontal bone of the skull, nasal root, and occipital anatomy, however, would allow for identification as belonging to a proto-West African. In fact, out-of-Africa enthusiast Chris Stringer observed startling parallels between the craniums of the much older solo man of Java, Omo II from Ethiopia and Iwo Eluru. According to a 2011 study, Iwo Eluru had neurocranial morphology that is in between the shapes of contemporary humans and ancient hominins, including Neanderthals and Homo erectus. Some anthropologists contend that the Iwo Eluru man descended from a lineage that went extinct between 200,000 and 400,000 years ago, possibly as a result of modern human activity. However, given that there are no evident signs of living descendants, and that the Iwo Eluru lineage ceased in West Africa around 12,000 years ago, it is likely that this group represents a unique hybrid species of close to modern humans. This is supported by the dating of Iwo Eluru man to the late Pleistocene. As discussed earlier, DNA from four West African groups may come from an unidentified archaic hominid. Before these lineages split some 800,000 years ago, this ancient group of humans appears to have diverged from the common ancestor of Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern humans. However, little is known about the presence of genes from ancient hominins in people whose ancestors lived in Africa, in part because it is challenging to collect ancient DNA in hot climates, where it can degrade. Previous research has shown that Homo sapiens bred with Neanderthals and Denisovans less than 100,000 years ago, so this is a familiar scenario. Researchers employed computer modeling to compare gene variants in 405 West African genomes with those in Neanderthal and Denisovan genomes, in order to get beyond these obstacles. The genomes of Yoruba people from Nigeria were examined by geneticists, using both contemporary and archaic segments. In contrast to Neanderthal and Denisovan genes, they discovered more instances of genetic variation in the ancient segments, indicating that neither of these ancient human populations was the source of the genomic variants. Men people from Sierra Leone, Ezen people from Nigeria, and people from the Western Gambia all had genomes that displayed similar patterns. Whether this ancient hominid is a ghost, for which we have no physical evidence, or one that we have already discovered traces of, such as Homo rhodesiensis, which may have originated approximately 700,000 years ago, is unknown. In fact, it's a really interesting question. Similar to the discovery of the proto-Neanderthal hominins in Spain, these findings make it more difficult for us to grasp our lineage, and the chronology of the evolution of various branches. All of this could be connected to a complexity that existed half a million years ago, or even more recent events that we don't fully comprehend. Nonetheless, we need more concrete proof to learn more. Other hominins from Eurasia, where it is a little colder and the DNA is better preserved, may be found, and they may help us better comprehend the complex relationship between archaic and modern humans.